All right, folks, so what I want to do here is a quick video on how to pick a lock. But before I do, why don't you go grab yourself a nice cold one, come on back, and we'll get started. All right, so hopefully everybody made it back. For this uh, video, what we're going to use is one of these see-through padlocks. You can get these on the internet for about 10 bucks, give or take, depending upon where you get them. This one happens to be branded as a gear shell but it doesn't really matter you'll see these with all kinds of different manufacturers names on them what's handy about this lock is a seven pin lock and you can see the inside mechanics of the lock you can see each pin and how it relates to the cylinder inside you can also see the springs behind it this is a pretty let me get a little bit closer this is a little bit of a uh, easy lock to pick given that uh, the pins in here are just straight pins there's no security pins now for this exercise, we're going to use these Sparrow picks. This is a short hook and a simple tension, tension wrench. They came out of my Sparrow's tuxedo kit. I'll link a video review of this kit below. Now if you take a look at this lock, you can see it works by, um, let's put this behind here, maybe it makes it a little bit easier to see. You can see how it works with this key. When you go ahead and you can insert the key, you'll see the pins jump and move. Each one of those pins is moving with respects to how this key is carved out. And then as you turn, your lock magically opens. Now what we're going to do for this is we're going to replicate the key with this short hook. Okay, for this video, because I'm a left-handed person, I'm going to have to pick this lock upside down. I guess I don't have to, but that's how it feels most comfortable to me. So what I'm going to do is put my tension wrench in there. And I want to go ahead and get in a position that's somewhat comfortable and will allow me to see the pins. The purpose of this lock <clears throat> is to allow me to see the pins and develop a feel for both the tension and the spring pressure that are on these pins. And I want to go ahead and I want to line them up with the shear line. So as I work down my pins, I'll be able to find pins that are what are called a binder. And that's really something that's prohibiting you from turning <clears throat> the cylinder. And as you can see, I was able to do it. It's actually quite simple. Now this gets a little bit harder in a lock where you can't see the pins. But what I would do is encourage you to buy some of these cheaper master locks, these laminated locks. This one happens to be a number three. This has four pins, which makes it a little bit easier to pick than the seven pin lock here. And these are non-security pins as well. So using this lock, I'll work on practicing the tension for the tension wrench and the, and the kinetic energy imparted by these springs, which gives me a feel for how the internals of a lock works. And then I'll just go ahead and I'll replicate on a lock like this. Okay, sorry folks, I had to bring this back into, uh, into focus here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my tension wrench in. A right-handed person typically which will pick like this. But as I said, as being a lefty, I do it, I do it a little bit backwards. The most important thing is really developing a soft touch on this tension wrench. And there you have it. All right, folks, if you like this video, why don't you go ahead, comment, share, subscribe, or watch one of the other links that I'm posting here at the end of the video. Thanks, everyone.